do 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 Time to sling some vectors with Peggy. Watch her fingers fly. Yeah. All right. Hello and welcome to the first episode of How to an Illustrator with Peggy. I'm the titular Peggy. I'm a 40-something lady who's been using Illustrator as her main medium for about 20 years. I'm mostly doing furry commissions right now. 2020 made it real hard to focus on my ongoing comics projects. I like to hang out in the Illustrator subreddits answering questions, too. Recently, I got begged to do some process videos. Apparently, there's a ton of people recording themselves using the pen tool over the photos, but not so many folks who work like me, from scratch, with the pencil tool. I've been honing this workflow for speed for most of my adult life. Maybe you'll find something useful here. Let's start with a tip that I type so much that I have it as a text expansion macro. You probably don't know that the pencil tool's got settings. More importantly, it's got about the worst defaults possible. Out of the box, it's impossible to sketch with because it's constantly editing the last line you drew instead of laying down a new one, and you can't draw filled shapes with it. It's useless. But if you hit return with it selected, you get its settings, and you can change them. Turn on fill new pencil strokes and edit selected. Turn off keep selected. Now you can actually sketch directly in Illustrator, which is a huge speed up. I use the pencil tool for about 90% of everything I draw. It's great once you find its settings. You'll also want to open up the appearance palette and turn off new art has basic appearance in its menu. If that's on, then every time you try to draw a shape, it'll strip off any effects you might have applied and just give you a basic fill and stroke, which is really a pain in the butt when you want to whip out a bunch of translucent blurred shapes at high speed to shade stuff. And finally, you might want to visit the performance pane of the prefs and turn off the GPU acceleration, because once you start piling up a lot of transparent stuff, it starts grinding to a halt. And it's too damn dumb to realize that it's sitting there spending 15 seconds trying to render your preview window. Maybe it works better if you got a great graphics card? I don't know. I just have what's in my Mac laptop. I ain't a gamer or a Bitcoin miner. Anyway, I've started recording myself working, and I'm going to experiment with putting some of these up on YouTube. We'll see how this goes. I would like to apologize for the fact that I'm not showing any keystrokes on the first part of this video. I'm still figuring out how the recording software works. All right, so this particular piece is a guy wanted me to draw his fursona in front of a cool space racer car. And I was like, um, I think this if it go if the car doesn't fight me, it'll cost about this much. I want to have room to have the car fight me. So I quoted him a price that was about half that as much as a range, just to be sure he was ready for that to happen. And he was cool with it. And as it so happened, the car worked out pretty well. You can see that I just I just started doodling some shapes and it's happening. There was a moment earlier where I resized it and I accidentally made it wider. And I was like, yeah, that works good. Go with it. Because, you know... A lot of this is about once you've gotten the idea of actually drawing stuff, there's a lot of just happy accidents, something worked, you did something, and it wasn't what you meant to do, but damn, that looks good. Which I ain't saying this is yet, but the part of my brain that expands this into what it could look like when it's done is saying, yeah, that's going to work, go with it. You'll notice I turned off object selection by path only for a while and use this to maneuver some of my reference work around the edge of the artboard and then promptly turned it right back off. I really greatly prefer to have to click on the edge of a path to select it because it makes it easier to work with really complicated drawings with paths piled up and sometimes you got to select something that's hidden beneath something else and the default is the other way and that makes it a pain in the booty. Here you're about to see me use an Astute's Super Marquee tool. There it is. Um, it's one of the one of their plugins, and it's super useful. I can't say I use all of their plugins on every drawing. Some of them I do. I use the Astute, the Direct Selection, and the um, the Smart Point Removal a lot. I find they're generally worth a hundred bucks a year subscription. Your mileage may vary. They work pretty well for me. And here I am fiddling with my internet start page while I wait for DuckDuckGo to refuse to serve up an image search. Because, you know, 
The client was like, I want to have my character in a cool fire suit that looks well with their car. And I'm like, what's a fire suit? And it turns out it's that special kind of outfit that is like fire retardant that people who drive racing cars wear for the very obvious reason of, you know, so you get in a crash, shit's on fire, and you don't want to be on fire. And I'm like, okay, what do they look like? I don't know. So I hit up the image search, and I look at them, and I think about them, and I'm never bothering actually tracing anything off here, but I'm still looking at that and thinking about how those are put together and how to adapt this for a dude who is a wolf man with a tail poking out the back. All right, I'm going to speed up this rough process for a little while, from like 2x to I think like 8x or something, because it's just going to be me doodling and further refining these forms into something that feels right. It's really just an iterative process where I lay down something that sort of looks okay, and then I'm like, okay, what can I do to make this more like the thing it should be? And I do that, and then I ask that question again, and I keep on doing that, and eventually I've got a sketch that is pretty decent. And done with the guy. All spa- all cool and space all cool space cars need awesome on the front of the right? car because you know, every cool space car needs an awesome and little emblem point, in the front, right? The only thing left to do is and then I'm start pretty much done. All the there is to do is knock in do some here, kind of some generic space scene, space alien and then I'm planet just gonna scene. For write some notes to myself about where I want to go with it. Then it's and really done. And I, I write a few a notes day. to myself about the and questions I, I want to ask the client. And I which send is basically some notes to the client hey, asking a couple what of color should I make this car? Is, is there, there a, a color, color that color every time you play a racing game that lets you customize your paint when job? When a video game lets that's you, you pick, pick your Because there probably is. Race I know I got one. Because you know he's got to have one. I do. one too. You probably do. These kind of things are important to make a good drawing that's going to make the person you're doing it for happy. When you're doing stuff like this that can stretch over multiple work sessions and multiple days, it's always really important, I find, to leave notes to myself of what I'm thinking I want to do and questions I want to ask and stuff like that, things I might play with. And it's also very important to keep track of my time, which I do in half-hour increments. This helps me not spend 57 hours on something I'm really only getting paid for about three hours of work on. So later on, I decide, I look through my commissions and I decide this is the one I'm going to work on again. And at this point, I'm starting to set up my colors, which I do by eyedroppering for my reference image and then making a new global color. This will be important later on and also making a new graphic style with the same name, which looks like a lot of extra work right now, but down the line, trust me, it will save me a lot of extra clicks. And you can also see here that I pasted in some feedback I got from the client, which was basically, hell yeah, I like how this is going, and these are the two color ways that I always use. So... I'm going to use that to start setting up some colors for the car, and I make some notes about about how my... How, what are those notes? And then I go make some notes about what date I'm starting work on, because I like to keep track of that in the file as well. I mean, I'm basically just kind of rambling semi-stonedly over this recording, so I can't be bothered to edit it too much. And I'm also starting to set up all my layers. I basically go through the whole drawing and kind of think about how I'm going to split it up. And just for managing how everything is working and making it real easy to not worry about select, hitting select all and getting half the entire drawing. It's a way of masking off stuff I don't need to work on right now. And also later down the line, it can be very important to be able to just say, I don't want to see the background right now. I don't want to see the car right now. I don't want to see the guy right now. And just turn that part off very quickly. And you'll notice, despite all my talk earlier about the pencil tool, that I am using the pen tool to draw this car. My general rule of thumb is pencil tool is for organic stuff, pen tool is for inorganic stuff. And here I'm like, you know, it might be cool to do some kind of glittery effect on this car. And I go looking in another drawing I did where I did some glittery latex. And I'm looking for that and pulling in 
some of the effects I created for that, just to save it for later and maybe fool around with it and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. You know, it's something to try. It's all just what I think might work. And here's me using a script that I got recently that creates a gradient swatch out of whatever you've got selected in the color swatch palette. I've modified it so that if I invoke it with only one swatch selected, it'll create a swatch, a gradient from 100% to 0%, which is something I do a lot when I'm creating my shade and highlight gradients. And I'm saving all of these in the graphic styles palette, because what it is is that lets me, with one click, it will say, okay, select this gradient swatch and do it in this direction at 50%, multiply, and I don't have to sit around remembering any of these settings. It's just very quick. I have my magic paints that I can quickly switch between and draw shapes. You could also do this by just having some shapes on the canvas that you select or eyedropper from, but I find this works really well because it lets me name them and organize them, and you can pull them into other drawings to use as a good starting point for something, like I did with that um, bubble thing earlier on. That's also really useful in my current Full Color Comics project because I just have all these named swatches and I can be like, okay, I'm drawing Olivia and I just scroll to the section of the graphic styles palette that's her and I can very quickly go from a loose rough to a finished drawing without much, without really much hassle. And here I am making some blends to create some repeated imagery in the in these air intakes. And you can see me muttering at the blends and using a trick where it will automatically create a spline for the blend if one or more of the shapes that you make the blend from is a closed shape. It won't do it if they're all open. I think it used to, and then it stopped. And I really hate that it stopped doing this. I can't remember if I put in a feature request to have that behavior changed. If I did, I'm not holding my breath for it to change. I've been asking him for the ability to rotate the frickin' canvas when working in Illustrator for like 10 years now and it still ain't happened. Ah, bureaucracy is what you gonna do. Oh, I should also probably note that all the keystrokes you're seeing, some of them are the defaults, but a lot of them are my own customized defaults. I've been using this thing for 20 years, and whenever I've felt that I need a tool to be more accessible, I have always felt very free to open up the keyboard shortcuts and to give a menu a shortcut or to change a shortcut for a tool. Anyway, I think I'm going to hush here for a while and just let you watch me draw. Put on some music that you like. I would consider putting in some, but I really don't feel like worrying about copyright issues. So you know what you like. Put something on and groove to it and watch me draw stuff if that sounds like fun. Or fast forward a while until I start yapping again. Either way. And here I stop working for a sec because I'm probably sipping my coffee or responding to a message on my phone or something, thinking about what I'm going to do next. I mean, these are important parts of the process. Staring off into space is an important part of drawing. So is getting in there and doing little reflections on Chrome. And here I'm spending a moment um, changing the keyboard shortcut for that gradient creation action that I mentioned earlier because I remembered that it conflicts with um, the, sh the hotkey for another panel. Oh yeah, and it looks like a little earlier I made the compound shape of the top of the car into a clipping mask. 
for the entire layer and just filled it with a big purple rectangle. And now I can just very quickly paint highlights and shadows right into that layer. Um, basically because making a dealing with a clipping mask that is also a compound path is kind of really a pain in the butt. So there's a little workaround to make it easier. And then it's really just a matter of sitting here for a while, painting a lot of highlights and shadows and making it feel like chrome. There is a certain way to do it with like lots of gradients and stuff. You could also be really anal and just make it all filled shapes with multiple gradients in it. And you know, that takes for frickin' ever. Just paint some shapes and inside a mask. It's a lot faster and it's a lot more interactive. And here I am about to ask myself the immortal question, will it blend with regard to two copies of the same um, clipping mask with a bunch of stuff inside it? And it turns out the answer is no. So I'm like, oh, right, I guess I'll manually duplicate it, which is going to be good as I can go in later and resize them and tweak them and maybe even change the highlights to be slightly unique for each of them. But... Eh, sometimes you're never sure. And here I am getting down and dirty with the internals of the layer to just draw a bunch of shades and properly interleave them with all these little vents. Kind of a pain in the butt. Normally I try to keep the layers closed, but sometimes you gotta go in and deal with the individual paths from that view.
And here's me using a design approach that I took from some of the um, art books for Star Wars, where if you want to draw a hover bike or something, you draw a cool upper shell, and then you just put a whole bunch of silhouetted techno junk underneath, and it looks good enough, and you don't got to sit there and think about what actually works. Just, you know, you can fake something. Good enough. And here I am popping down time sync to see how long I've been working and going, oh, okay, I've been working about an hour on this. Am I in for more? Oh, yeah, I think I'm in for some more. Rad. And then I decide, you know, this car is mostly done. So I think it's time to play around with the colors and use the power of that global swatch, which if it's checked, then everything drawn in it is linked to it. So I can easily change the color of the entire drawing with just a few clicks and start searching for the right color that says this is either purple or orange, but it's also a really fast purple and orange. And I end up kind of I end up kind of going to this particular safety orange that was um a little Mazda that my mom had when I was growing up. It was not a fast car, but you know that color made it look like it went about ten miles faster all the time. Also, I lied earlier when I said I was going to take another half an hour because it looks like I actually just changed the colors and then looked at it and saved and said, I'm done for the today. I'll be back tomorrow. And then a few days later, I'm back in the commission time. I load this up and I'm like, eh, I don't know. Is this what I feel like doing? Let me look at the other ones. I don't know. And eventually I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I'll do this one. So I look at it and I'm like, car's done for now. I think it's time to work on the driver. Most of the time I like to prefer to draw the character first and then draw everything in the background around it to kind of lead the eye to it. But in this case, the car is very much the secondary character and I felt like I needed to get it right. So I worked on that a while first. And here you can kind of see the use of me preferring to have these named colored swatches because I'm able to very quickly draw all these shapes with the pencil tool and I don't have to ever stop and think, oh my god, is that the right color? I just look at the name. You know, and a lot of artists would be just as happy to just do it with um, eyedroppering off of the reference image, but eh, I like working this way. Also, you can see that I just made a new artboard, which is not going to be a crop I use. It's really just there for my habit of hitting Command-1 on a regular basis to, zo to step back out of Zoom and see, is this working at the level it's actually designed for? It's real easy to get lost in infinite Zoom in Illustrator otherwise, and this is a habit I strongly suggest that you try to build. Of just You work for a little while, and you kind of need a slight mental break and you just hit command one or command zero and you zoom back and you're looking at the whole thing and you're like, does this work? Do I need to do more work or did I just overwork it? And either way, you either fix what needs more work or you move on to another part instead of spending six hours drawing the reflection of the entire scene in someone's iris. Which is a thing I actually did once before deciding I need to never do that again. Basically, this is my standard process for drawing a character, and it's just a matter of I draw a bunch of solid shapes with the pencil tool, and then I go back using Draw Inside, and I start doing highlights and shading. You're going to see me hitting the same three keys a lot, A for the selection arrow and N for the pencil, and D to cycle draw modes and draw inside. And I'll be doing that a lot for a while. Anyway, I think I'm going to hush for a while and again, you know, put on some music, watch me draw, or fast forward until I start yapping again, whichever works. Also, if you got any questions about stuff I'm doing, feel free to drop a timestamp in the comments and say, Peggy, what the hell are you doing here? And I'll attempt to answer.
always very important to make sure the eyes have a lot of contrast so you can see them, which I'm doing here by just adding a little more lower eyelash to give them a little outline and make them pop a little. Also, while I'm breaking the silence here for a little bit, I just want to note there's a dynamic I had to be aware of where I was trying to make his fire suit interestingly asymmetrical, yet still not make him look like someone wearing a Harlequin costume. And here's an important little trick. If something has a shadow and it is touching that shadow, then it's standing on that ground. So you can see me start with a shadow that's overlapping his car, and then I distinctly and intentionally change that shadow so that most of the car is not touching it, so it feels more weightless, feels more like it's hovering over the ground. Also, in Illustrator Trickery, whenever you see me hit a number key, which you'll see me doing here, that's me playing with the opacity level of a thing. I went into the keyboard shortcuts and assigned all the numbers to opacity 10%, 20%, 30%, etc., which is lurking there unassigned in the keyboard shortcuts. Seriously, just go have a look in the keyboard shortcuts, and if you see something that says, I would really like to be able to hit that with one key, but there's nothing assigned to it. You're probably going to see that. And just pick a key, assign it. Illustrator is a big-ass toolbox, and out of the box, it really doesn't try to organize any of its tools for you. And I think part of the challenge of beginning with Illustrator is a matter of saying, these are the tools that I want to have close at hand. And here I am doing the very important task of making sure that the font that I put some notes on my drawing for things I want to do in the future is in the right design place for something that would work with, like, you know, a mid-90s psychosis game about driving really fast with lots of art by the Designers Republic. And now that I've got the car and the guy mostly done, they're not there, but they're 90% there, it's time to start making a whole bunch of layers for the background.
And here I'm loading another image that I did a while back to pull a bunch of brushes and styles out of it that I'll be using later on. Maybe. I don't know. I think they might be useful at this point. I don't think I ended up using most of them, but you know, it's part of the process. I certainly did end up using the heck out of this little gleam brush that I pulled out of that file, so there's that. It's a simple little brush with a translucent line and a translucent radial gradient that I am pretty sure I probably got into the brush by rasterizing it at a high resolution because I find that a lot less hassle than fucking around with endlessly expanding stuff until Illustrator stops telling me that you're trying to make a brush that has some elements you can't use in a brush. Why bother thinking? Just rasterize that shit at high resolution and move on. You'll never care. Save your care for more important things like spending five minutes picking exactly the right font for that note layer, because I didn't have exactly the right font before, and now I do. That very important matter sorted, I decided it's time to close up for the day, track my time, and just, you know, get on with my life, do other fun stuff. A few days later, I come back, I decide this is what I'm working on today, and I just start fooling around, going, okay, what needs Dylan? At this point, it's kind of a matter of looking at my little to-do list on that notes layer and just not going down it and knocking stuff off. I decided I want to finish off the rear end of the car at first, so I start doing some more shapes with the pen tool and applying a dotted line to that big thruster to give it a feel of it's kind of ribbed like a big rocket thruster. It's a useful little technique to create a dashed line with, an, with a circular end cap and a dash of zero and a first gap of around the width of your line that creates a nice string of circles that I used in that case. And I use that a lot of the time for like beads or whatnot. It's just a nice quick way to have a line that's a row of circles. That key, which is an important part of the entire attitude of the piece, is totally vanishing against those rocket thrusters now, so I go in and I start playing with the color to make it just pop as, hey, he's flipping his key in the air, you want to go for a ride, or maybe you want to race? And then I look at my list and I'm like, okay, did those two, what do I want to do next? Oh, I think I'll do the car emblem. And I'll note that feels like a detail that in the past I would have maybe forgotten to do. And then only realized I'd forgotten to do when I went to save the final drawing. Then I was like, God damn it, I forgot to do that. And do I feel like going back in and doing it when I feel like I've already finished it? And ever since I started this habit of having the notes layer with just a little to-do list, I find I do that a lot less often because it just lets me keep all those thoughts of, oh, I should do this in my head. And there are times where I don't even necessarily do everything on it, but it's been there and I've explicitly looked at that list and said, no, I don't think I need to do that after all. And instead of going, oh, crap, I forgot to do that. And oh, God, I'm so fucking tired working on this. I'm not going to bother. Puppet Warp, surprisingly useful for shifting chunks of stuff around, especially if you turn off content-aware defaults in the first pane of the prefs.
It might be a little hard to see here because I'm working on my big monitor for this chunk of it and I'm making a lot of little bits, but I'm sitting here doing the gleams, all the gleams step now. Just using that gleam brush, drawing a bunch of little lines. I shudder to think how much work that would be if I was sitting here using a real airbrush instead of just pretending to be an airbrush jockey. And here I am going, you know, this guy is not quite popping off of his car, so let me start seeing what I can do to create some contrast between him by making a layer between him and the car and putting something there, brightening it or darkening it or something to make him stand out a little bit better. At this point, I really don't know which one's going to work. I'm just trying a bunch of things real quick until something does. And the winner turns out to be just apply some shadow onto the top of the car behind him. That works pretty well enough. And then I go looking for a few styles that I've used in backgrounds on my comic to start just repurposing those for doing a background here. Because it's like, you know, hey, lots of weird space plants. I can reuse these. Perfectly easy. If I recall correctly, I think what looks like a pretty simple thorny brush is actually kind of randomized. It's actually like three lines overlapped in the appearance panel with um, different randomization on them. So it stays kind of fresh all the time. Illustrator makes it really easy to repeatedly reuse the same thing. And part of the challenge with there is making it not obvious that it's being done unless it's actually unless it's actually the right thing for it to be obvious that you're reusing stuff. And here I am deciding to quickly make a little scatter brush of a irregular quadrilateral that I use to make something like leaves. I've made this brush like a dozen times and I just didn't feel like going hunting for a copy of it. It's quicker to make it anew. Or maybe it isn't. I don't know. Sometimes you just gotta do it fresh just to do it and see if you find something new, I guess. Anyway, I made a brush and I just accepted all the defaults and I drew a few lines with it so I'd have something to work with as I started playing with its settings again with the preview turned on. And then I can just very quickly do some scribbling and hey, there's some stylized leaves, add some more in a brighter color and oh look, there's some lighting on it. It's pretty easy to quickly imply some foliage with something like that. And there I am creating some texture by my favorite trick of creating a big layer with a big mesotinted rectangle in it. And I set the layer to, um, to hard or soft light at about 20%. And you can set a layers. You can, you can apply effects to a whole layer by clicking on the little circle to the right of its name. And that's a, that lets you target the whole layer. I do that this way because it makes for slightly faster processing. And here I start creating some highlighting and texture on the leaves by doing a big shape with a lot of um, roughing and tweak going on in it. You can really get some interesting randomized effects with that really quickly.
And I'll be honest, here I'm just kind of flailing around. I make some bad decisions that I take a while to recover from. Um, here I'm trying to unify these colors a bit by throwing a tint layer on, kind of like making a glaze in acrylics or something. You know, just something translucent to play with different opacity modes and unify the color. I think I don't end up using this one, but I also do similar things in a lot of my pieces where I'll have layers called air that are just the color of the sky, and I stack them between background things to create um, atmospheric perspective pretty handily. Going back into the comics pages, looking for some more styles to swipe. This is one of the other reasons I'm a big fan these days of making named graphic styles, because you can load in another file as a style library, and you can just very quickly go through it and pull stuff out like you see me doing here. I pulled these weird, tall, leafy, luminescent things out of the same file. It's like, you know, I spent a lot of time making them, and they worked in parallax, and, well, they'll work here too, maybe. Let's see what happens. Put some vines on the ground in the background. You know, it's starting to look like a messy, organic place now. It's starting to feel somewhere. Not together yet, but it's going somewhere. And here's me fooling around making some suns. It's just a matter of draw one circle and start piling up a whole bunch of fills with different resizing effects and different opacities and different colors and fills. Some gradient fills. I think I, en I end up using a pattern fill that I had in this file because of the stuff I brought in. It created an interesting look and I just had to kind of randomly stumble around with a vague idea of what I wanted trying stuff until something really came together and said, oh yeah, that's right. And when you see me spamming numbers and punctuation, that's me changing respectively the opacity level and the opacity mode. I've got 10 of my favorite opacity modes bound to 1 through 0 and minus shifted, and I've got um, all, all 10 opacity levels bound to those same keys unshifted. And here you can see me use an astute stylism plugin, which adds sliders on the canvas for a bunch of various effects. It's pretty handy.
Here what I'm doing is using the resize tool while holding down the tilde key. What that does is it only transforms the pattern fill. That also works with the rotation tool and um, hitting the arrows on the keyboard to move something or dragging it with one of the selection tools. It does not work with the free transform tool because that came long after and nobody involved in writing that tool probably even knew about that feature. And now here I am, very near the final end of this drawing, and I'm going back in and I'm changing a color that I created at the very beginning of the drawing. And everything I drew in it is changing because it's a global color. Since I use this color for all the highlighting, this lets me kind of change the color of all the lighting in just like three clicks. It's great. Honestly, I really should have layered up um, that trees layer into a couple more layers because there's times where I wanted to draw something in between some stuff, which always means it needs a new layer, but I just didn't because I was in some weird mood. You know, I'm not perfect.
little tiny bit of rim light or maybe just a bit of reflection off the ground to help make this edge of this space car pop a little better. And some reflections of the guy leaning on it because, you know, it's chrome, it's metal, it reflects. And here I am using Astute's Dynamic Shapes plugin to make a hexagon because that's less hassle than hitting up and down on Illustrator's polygon tool and then making a pattern fill and using that to make the some intake grids for these for these intakes. Because you know, don't need bugs in that thing. And then what I do is I draw a rectangle in the graphic style I made for that and resize the pattern in that. And then I do redefine graphic style and that's instantly mirrored to everything else I drew. And here I'm starting to feel like it's getting really close to done now, but I need to go play with the color on his outfit and see if I can make him pop and the colors on his car and just really find the right colors for it. And I'm really leaning on global colors and on redefining graphic styles here because those are just really powerful ways to make Illustrator instantly change a lot of stuff on a very fine scale for me. Here I'm like, oh right, I wanted to draw his helmet. And then I don't think I ever did bother going back in and drawing it. It would have been nice, but I don't think it really needed it.
Just look at this pretty boy. Let me add a little bit of shadow around the edge of his irises to make him a little prettier and make those eyes pop a little bit more. And if I'm going to put the mark of the god of go fast on his keychain, then I'd better make sure it's the right color too. Add a little bit of shadow on his face and then go back in and take his eye and put it in front of that shadow, which is basically you know, hitting it with a little key light to make that a really hot contrasty part. And now he's like, he is looking right into your soul saying, hey babe, wanna race? And this is the point where I'm like, yeah, I think I'm about done. Check my time, record my tracking, then go and do a save out of the final bitmap image, and then get annoyed because the save preview is not showing some blur on that refraction on the suns, and try and track it down, and then ultimately just get rid of most of it. Which makes me sad because I liked it, but there's still enough of it remaining on another layer that I'm happy. It's a weird little glitch somewhere deep in Illustrator, I guess. And then save it out, save the file, close, and I'm done. We'll end with a slow pan across this image. And let me know what you thought of this video, um, if there's anything I did right or could have done better, and I guess like and subscribe or something like that. Later!